Hey there, Kiryu-san. Are you here for a drink? You, uh, sure that'll be okay? No need to worry about me. <laughs> oh, please. But, since you're already here, there just so happens to be a seat right next to me. Great. I'll take you up on that. So, Saiko, you're a mama over at a cabaret club? I'm not just a mama. I'm the owner of the whole joint. After the previous owner passed away, one thing led to another and I ended up taking over. The younger girls are usually the ones serving the customers, but sometimes I lend them a hand too. <laughs> Guess I should be paying you for this conversation then. Mm-hmm. Cough it up, mister. But I guess you did help us out before, Kiryu-san, so... <laughs> Let's just call it even. I won't be taking any money from you. Oh, whoops. I should be calling you Suzuki-san instead, right? It's gotta be hard calling me Suzuki all the time. You can call me Kazuma if you want. Um, yeah, I don't think I can do that. Might be a little awkward if the two of us were suddenly on a first name basis. <laughs> Fair enough. You don't have to call me Suzuki, by the way. Just put it out of your mind. Okay, roger that. You know, you give off this air of sophistication, even when you're sipping a drink. You look like such a gentleman. Same goes to you. You look like the very picture of elegance, sitting here, drinking alone. <laughs> oh yeah? <sighs> Maybe working at the club has actually sucked the youth out of me. I'm sure that it takes more than youth and vigor alone to become a successful business owner. Yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe that's why the men who come on to me are starting to change up their pickup lines. Really now? How so? Well, they don't stop at dating. And by that, I mean they start hinting at marriage. Or, you know, things like that. Those are some intense customers. They're not like that at all around the younger girls. But I seem to attract a lot of customers like that. The type of guy who's looking to get hitched. Uh, guess that means I'm at the right age for that. People are starting to look at me that way now. At least that's the sort of vibe I get. Actually, get this. One of the guys hitting on me is pretty rich, and he has a lot going for him. Sounds like you don't mind that at all. Mm, I wouldn't say that. Honestly, I'm not looking to get married. I'm plenty satisfied with how my life is right now. On the other hand... There's my twin sister. I keep thinking she needs to tie the knot with her boyfriend and settle down already. I mean, she's at the perfect age to get married. If she doesn't hurry, she'll let the chance slip by. Something's not adding up here. If she's your twin, wouldn't that make her the same age as you? I know, I know. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. I'm aware I've just been making excuses, trying to justify myself. As long as you know. I won't comment. <laughs> By the way... Hmm? Did Ichiban say anything about me? When you guys were in Hawaii? Let me think. But why do you ask? Are you worried about him? Well... Not exactly. I just haven't talked to him in a while. <laughs> he did something that pissed me off. And how long is a while? N nah, just leave it. <laughs> All that matters is that he's doing okay. Besides, this is Ichiban we're talking about. No matter where he goes, I can't imagine him being anything but his stubborn, cheerful self. Hear you, son? What's up? Why'd you get all quiet? Did something happen between you and Kasuga? I'll help you out if you need a hand. Oh, no. <laughs> it's nothing like that. All right. 
Will you let me know if there's anything I can do for you? Got that? <laughs> You're a real compassionate guy, Kiryu-san. Kinda reminds me of Ichiban. <laughs> what can I say to that? You know, if I keep spending more time with you, Kasuga might get upset. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not like that at all. The two of us are just friends. Sure. Well, let's drink again sometime when we get the chance. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> not at all. I'd love to, in fact. Just make sure your health doesn't get any worse, Kiryu-san. You got it. I look forward to doing this again. Yeah, same here. It's been fun. Hey, Saiko. Mind if I join you for a drink? Yeah, go ahead. I've been saving this seat just for you, Kiryu-san. Gotta keep an eye on the sickly, you know. Make sure he's not drinking too much. That's so. I'm sure he'd appreciate it. Actually, there's something I wanted to ask you. When you're hitting on a woman, are you the attentive type? The kind of man who takes care of all of her needs? Hmm, I'd say so, yeah. But not to the point where I'd embarrass myself. Have you ever given someone a bouquet? That's not my style. I've never done that myself, but I think it's actually pretty bold. Okay, but if a guy gave you enough roses to nearly fill your room every single day, that'd be crazy, right? And crazy expensive to boot. I'm with you there, but maybe I should have tried that back in the day. <laughs> Wait, seriously? Well, I'm sure you could still pull it off, so don't take yourself out of the game just yet. Anyone would be thrilled to get flowers from you, Kiryu-san. Honestly, it's kind of cute when a guy tries his best not to act embarrassed. <laughs> right. Whatever you say. So what's with the rose talk? Did some guy actually try to woo you with a bouquet or two? <laughs> You're pretty sharp, Kiryu-san. That is spot on. <sighs> he must be quite the character, then. All right, I'm listening. So what kind of guy is he? He's the CEO of some consulting firm that just started up here in Ijincho. He's young, only like a year older than me. After his first visit to the club, he asked me on a date, and I figured it wouldn't hurt to say yes. And ever since then, he's been sending me a ton of roses every day. To my club and to my home. It doesn't really bother me, and I just feel bad if I told him off for it. You shouldn't, though. Was this pretty recent? Yeah, like, since last month. The guy seems head over heels for you. Those flowers can't be cheap, either. And on top of that, he even slips in stuff like marriage and our future whenever we're having a conversation. So this CEO guy is the same customer who was pressing you about getting hitched? Yep. I mean, honestly, he was a great guy on our date, and he does seem to know how to treat a woman. He's attentive, and he never runs out of things to talk about. And he's funny, too. Some girls might even call him perfect. Seems like you don't think too badly of Mr. CEO, either. Huh. Does it come off that way? Oh, yeah. That reminds me. What's up? I heard Ichiban is doing just fine over there. He's, uh, hanging around with that one girl, right? Chitose-chan? Uh, oh, yeah, I guess so. So, what's she like? Tose is the daughter of the Fujinomiya, so you could say that she's pretty unique. That's what I've heard too. 
Being born into a family like that is already way impressive. At first I thought she was just a petty thief. Kasuga and I both got played by her. Shitose-chan more or less stripped Ichiban of everything he owned and threw him out, right? Wasn't he being way too careless? <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, he went all the way to Hawaii to meet his mom. <sighs> he should have kept his head on straight. But Kasuga wasn't seduced by her. He only got his drink spiked. On top of that, she told him she was Akane-san's housekeeper. I don't think he had much reason to suspect her. Yeah, he let his guard down, but I wouldn't blame him. Uh-huh. So you're taking Ichiban's side, Kiryu-san? <laughs> that man never changes. I'm not sure if it's because he's gullible or what. It's hard to leave him alone, isn't it? Incredibly. <laughs> I know from personal experience. He bears his heart to anyone, so... I'm positive he doesn't look at Chitose in the way you think he does. Does that make you feel any better? What? <laughs> look, if Ichiban's getting friendly with a cute girl over in Hawaii, I'm happy for him. Really. <laughs> uh-huh. Sure. I'll drop the subject then. <laughs> and what are you chuckling at? What's so funny, huh? <sighs> that does it. I'm gonna drink all night long. I don't know if it's just your age talking or what, but that calm attitude of yours just pissed me off. Heck, how would you like it if I stripped you down today, Kiryu-san? <laughs> Careful. I'm a sick man, remember? Have mercy on me. Hey, what are you smirking about? Hey, Psycho. Did you just get here? Yeah, but something's been bugging me. Can't even get a nice buzz. You alright? What's bugging you? Uh, it's that whole dating thing we talked about last time. You know, with that consulting firm CEO? Right, him. Still going on about marriage, I take it. That he is. Guess there's no time to rest for the popular. I don't think he drops by the club for fun, either. He's just there, hitting on me the whole time. He doesn't even glance at the younger girls. Sure, he looks like a womanizer, but at least he's got money. His business seems to be doing well, too. I just don't get why he's so focused on me. Hmm. You think he's got an ulterior motive? Hmm. I've got some money saved up, just like anyone else, but this guy's definitely better off than me. So if it's not about the money, then that means he fell for my beauty, charm, and intellect. Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally. Knowing all that, I can say this with full confidence. That man is just crazy for you. Well, even so, I'm not really thinking about marriage. My club might be on the small side, but I like being able to run things my way. I've even told him myself that I'm not planning to get married. But he's pressing so hard, it makes me wonder if he's after something, you know? Is it safe to assume that he's probably got some kind of hidden motive? Cause it is a little creepy. Tell me more about this guy. I might be able to figure out what he's up to that way. I looked into him myself, but I didn't find anything too sketchy. This guy is... well... I told you that he founded a consulting firm, right? But he's also the son of a CEO of another large company. Judging by his background alone, you could say he's set for life. But even though he's wealthy, he tries not to rely on his parents. Seems like he really struggled on his own for a while. You know, it's starting to sound like you admire the guy. 
It's easy to figure out who's struggled in life once you get a conversation rolling. In that respect, he's not just another rich kid. He can be serious, but he can also let loose and have fun. I think people like him are pretty reliable. Ugh, I've had enough rose bouquets for a lifetime, though. Well, this is just something my imagination cooked up. But I can see Kaska doing his own thing with roses, too. Yeah. <laughs> That's not gonna get him anywhere, though, because he doesn't understand what really matters. Well, at least with him, he wouldn't have to worry about a hidden motive. He'd make it too obvious. He's not such a bad guy. Uh, okay. You know, here you son. Sounds to me like you're trying to talk him up. Let me guess. You heard something, didn't you? Like, oh, I don't know, how Ichiban asked me out on a date? I want to hear your side of the story. I've only overheard Kasuga and Nanba talking. So nobody told you anything about it? Well, we were pretty busy over in Hawaii. We had to rush through an entire laundry list of things to get them done. Now I finally have room to breathe. And to drink. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Sounds like something happened on your date? Yeah, sure was something. He proposed to me on our first date of all things. No kidding. That's a very Kasuga thing to do. But I assume it didn't go well, considering you're not on speaking terms. It did not, no. Ichiban just kept going on and on about what he wanted us to be when we got married. Obviously shows how much he's thought about it. Yeah, I know he can be a bit awkward when it comes to this kind of stuff. But honestly speaking, that's not exactly what I wanted to hear. But you weren't against a proposal? Well, we've known each other for a long time. I guess Ichiban figured his feelings wouldn't change. Not then and not in the future. Hmm, so I take it you didn't completely hate the idea. Well, truth be told, it got my heart fluttering. I'm pretty sure that I was feeling just as nervous as Ichiban was that day. No kidding. Right now, I'm the one getting all worked up listening to this. Yeah, I know, right? Ugh, enough of that. Seriously, how do we always end up talking about Ichiban when we're drinking together? Yeah, I guess we do. <sighs> Let's talk about your love life for a change, Kiryu-san. Anything new with you? I've been a sick, lonely man for a good while now, but... I had my fair share of romance in the past. Oh yeah? I'm listening. Well, a long time ago. Soon after I was placed in foster care. She arrived. The moment I laid eyes on her, I felt something special between us. In the past, I was innocent, eager. But then... But then? Uh, <clears throat> it'll take me more than a day or two to get through this story. That and, uh, I'm starting to doze off. What? Seriously? That is so not fair. I'll make time to tell you the whole story, once I'm in better shape. Uh-huh, sure. And when will that be? I'm gonna have you schedule that for a later date, then. <laughs> Don't ask for the impossible. Once you get to my age, you never know when you'll be in good shape again. <laughs> Don't give me such a half-assed excuse, then. Complain all you want. I'm not budging. Hey, Sunny. Here you, son. Came here for a drink, did you? They say booze is the best medicine. <laughs> I don't need to hear your excuses. What you drink is none of my business, after all. I won't comment. 
Appreciate it. Mind if I sit here? Not at all. Ah, oh, still I can hardly believe it. The Kazuma Kiryu comes wandering in and sits next to me for a drink. How surreal. It's not that big a deal. I'm just a middle-aged man with graying hair. But you, you're not just the head of the Komi Jewel. You took command of the Yokohama Liumang as well. And all your subordinates have entrusted you with their lives. It must be a heavy burden to bear. Huh. <laughs> you flatter me. That was a burden I've abandoned. Oh yeah, right. That. About 20 years ago, you retired right after becoming the fourth chairman of the Tojo clan. Had you not, I wonder if the Tojo clan would have turned out any differently. Hmm, who can say? But the Tojo clan would have disbanded regardless. The times have changed. And I doubt I'd be able to do a single thing about it. Not by myself. If anything, were I still at the top, the Tojo clan might have disbanded much sooner. I didn't have it in me to lead. Do you really think so? Because the way I see it, you just dislike being part of the herd. <laughs> you don't mince words, do you? Oh, I meant no disrespect. It's fine. I wasn't offended. It was actually quite refreshing. Only the head of an organization could speak so bluntly. So long as the underworld abides by its own laws, being the head doesn't mean much. And if someone gets any bright ideas, then all I have to do is stare them down. That's basically everything in the job description. Easy, right? I'm sure it must be easy for you. You're something else. Thanks to you, Ijincha's still standing even after facing pressure from Ryo Aoki. Wow. You really think so? Uh, um, <clears throat> I'm, I'm honored, but flattery won't get you anywhere. I'm not one to pay lip service. I'm completely serious. So, does that mean I'm doing all right? At least in your eyes? Yeah, for what it's worth, I think you're doing just fine. You good on time? Oh, there's no way I'm calling it quits when you're still drinking, Kirusan. I'll hang on for as long as I can. Do you always go this hard? Your subordinates must have a tough time keeping up. <laughs> Power harassment is a prominent concern in the underground these days. I never force a subordinate to drink. I won't deny that there's merit in ruling by fear, but you won't last for long with that alone. That all makes sense. It's becoming more and more apparent that you're a natural-born leader. That reminds me. Does Komijul still monitor the whole town? All the information you've extracted is the source of Komijul's power, am I right? Right, but it's not like I keep track of every little detail. One of my rules is that my confidant only brings me crucial information. And by confidant, you mean Jungi Han? Of course. He's a very capable man, and one of unwavering loyalty at that. I'd say he's the perfect right-hand man. If only he weren't so snarky. <laughs> but there are others I consider my confidants. Some are even from my father's generation. Hmm. Your father's generation, huh? Must be close to my age, then. You're right. The elders of the organization are like my great and wise uncles. Every now and then, I'll get an earful from them. So even you have something you're afraid of. They were part of the Jingon Mafia before Komi Jewel. Back in their prime, they had a healthy rivalry with the Tojo clan. Probably a little before you made a name for yourself. I've heard a lot about your heroics, so having someone like you sit right next to me is sort of unnerving. What was that? Oh, um, it's nothing. Forget I said anything. The former Jingon Mafia. I hope they don't disapprove of you siding with me. Well, I'm not sure myself how they feel about all this, but even if they do disapprove, 
I can take care of it. I wouldn't worry about those old gents. After all, what I say goes. Please don't take any risks from me. As the leader of an organization, you should always take your subordinates' concerns into account. <laughs> Seriously, though, I'll be all right. Have a little more faith in my leadership skills. All right. Thanks, Anhe. Glad to have you on my side. Ijincho has been a little too quiet lately. I was honestly hoping for some excitement. Now, with you in town, things are bound to get interesting. Hold on, are you expecting something dangerous to happen? Not necessarily. A toast, Kiryu-san? Let me welcome you to my town once more. Of course. Welcome to Ijincho, Kazuma Kiryu. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. <laughs> Looks like someone's enjoying herself. Oh, was that the impression you got? It was indeed. Well, just between you and me, I was a nervous wreck. I mean, he's the dragon of Dojima. A living, breathing legend, leagues above me in the underworld. I can't afford to look stupid in front of Kiryu-san, especially as a representative of Ijincho. <gasps> Did I say anything weird to him? Not as far as I know. All right. I won't dwell on it if you say so. <laughs> and I do say so. Imagine me drinking with the Kazuma Kiryu. Just the two of us. Guess I'm not doing too bad. <laughs> Hey, Sonny. Is this seat open? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. As you can see. Something the matter? You look a little down. Oh, pff, don't mind me. It's nothing you need to be concerned about, Kiryu-san. All right. I'll just wait until you feel like talking about the thing I shouldn't be concerned about. Don't mind me. <sighs> so that's how we're doing this? There's no winning with you, is there? I see. So your officers, these great and wise uncles of yours, are acting suspiciously whenever you're not looking. Yeah, basically. A lot of people in Komi Jewel, the younger members in particular, have been complaining to me, saying they don't know what to do. The elders put up a front when I'm around, but when something goes sideways, they take it out on their younger subordinates. It's unbelievable. If they have a problem with how I run things, then they should say it to my face. It's hard, having to deal with subordinates who are older than you or who may even have more experience. Seems like the Queen of Komi Jewel has some troubles of her own. It, it, it's a minor issue, and a personal one at that. It's really nothing you should be concerned about. Those officers are around my age, aren't they? I could lend you a hand if you need it. Oh, no, 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 please don't. <laughs> I am not saying another word so I can at least preserve what's left of my people's dignity. We're on the same team now, so there's no need to go about things alone. Just how long are you going to treat me as a guest? Uh, well, for as long as I'm the face of this town. But... I'm happy you consider us allies. Oh, happy is an understatement. I am over the damn moon right now. Hmm? What was that? I didn't catch that last bit. Oh, nothing. I was just saying that it's the thought that counts. 
Not only are you my guest, but you know, you're also sick. You should put your health first and foremost. Mm, went straight for the jugular there. There once were three organizations that kept a close eye on this town. Komi Jewel, the Leomong, and the Seiryu clan. While it may have looked like a three-way power struggle on the surface, it was actually intended to prevent outside forces from entering. Compared to the past, Ijincho seems a bit too relaxed nowadays. I suppose as a side effect of the ongoing peace. There's not much I can do about that, but my reputation would take a major hit if you're caught worrying. Yeah, I hear you. Guess that means there's nothing more I can say. I, but maybe the alcohol's getting to me. Sorry, I didn't mean to come off so persistent. Don't worry about it. <sighs> Perhaps I'm in no position to say this, but... Hmm? I prefer how Ijin Cho is now over how it was before. Even the Komi Jewel bunch has become quite social these days. <laughs> yeah, I guess they have. <laughs> yeah, I hear they actually started saying hi to people on the streets. I mean, some of them, of course, not all. Komi Jewel used to have this image of being a secret organization that was always out of sight. Without any rivals around, like the Tojo clan or the Omi Alliance, they're probably enjoying the peace while it lasts. <laughs> I see. Oh, thanks for that, Barkeep. I prefer Ijincho the way it is now, too. Actually, that reminds me. An old regular from Komi Jewel gave me this. What is it? A mask worn by members of our organization. It's modeled after the ones used in traditional Korean performances. We would hide behind a mask whenever we had to get our hands dirty. Right. But the owner of this mask said it's been a long time since he's had to wear it. Eventually, he amicably cut ties with the organization, got married, settled down in this town. He left this mask at the bar, saying he was turning over a new leaf. Looks like Komiju is going through some changes. Still, he shouldn't have given this mask away, much less to an outsider. Maybe I should tighten up operations. Maybe you should loosen up a bit, Sunhee. The way you carry yourself sometimes makes you appear real intimidating. Huh. <laughs> Some would say that's one of my good points, though. Better to look tough so your subordinates know who's in charge. Joongi Han thinks so, too. But, uh, what say you, Kiryu-san? Well, your subordinates probably appreciate the fact that you're easy to read. I... <laughs> I... I see. You think so, too. Hmm. These drinks taste even better when I'm with you, Kiryu-san. I was thinking the same thing. I'm supposed to be dead, so... I never thought I'd be able to enjoy a drink like this again. That's why I'm savoring every glass. Because I have a friend to drink with. A friend? You consider me your friend? Of course. Unless that's a problem. Oh, oh, not at all. I'm honored. Hey, son he. Mind if I join you? Of course I don't mind, but... How's your health, Kiryu-san? Just fine. I am limiting my intake, believe it or not. <laughs> Thanks for the concern, though. Is it really alright for you to spend so much time with us? Will your subordinates manage without you there? I'm sure they'll be okay. There are hardly any issues that require my input. If they need me to get involved, then they know how to reach me. So there's no need to worry about me, Kiryu-san. Your phone's ringing. So it is. Just ignore it. I'm enjoying our time together right now. Uh, but, uh... See? 
Now, if it's really important, they'll call again right away. You gonna answer that? <sighs> Nothing could possibly be more important than enjoying a drink with you, Kiryu-san. I appreciate the thought, but now I'm a bit on edge here. <sighs> well, now that that's over, we can finally drink in peace. Sunhi, don't you think you should call back? Even if I don't respond right away, my subordinates will take action. They've been trained to do so on a regular basis. If you're sure, I've got nothing to say to that. <sighs> I suppose I have to take this then. Excuse me, Kiryu-san. Yeah, of course. What? This had better be important. Yeah, got it. Bye. Everything okay? what they want? All good. Don't worry. It's not a big deal. Just ran into a little bit of trouble. Your subordinates called you multiple times, but it turns out it's no big deal. Yeah, uh, apparently a fire broke out on Komi Jewel Turf. What? Okay, don't get so worked up. It was just a minor fire, but I've been told it might have been deliberate. Some guys from the Liumang roaming the area, allegedly. The Liumang? But I thought they were under your command, same as Komi Jewel. Yeah, which is why I'm having them look into the matter. Again, no need to concern yourself with this. Well, that's enough of that. Don't mind me. I know you want to go. You're worried, right? After all, the ones who started the fire were the Liu Mang. If you get involved, then you'll be dousing the flames, preventing them from becoming even bigger trouble. Okay, you have a good point. I know. But still... I'm done here. If I drink any more, then I won't hear the end of it from Nanba. Go show your face, even for just a second. Your subordinates need you there more than I do here. Fine, fine. Ah, once you've made up your mind, you can be as stubborn as a mule. Guess we'll call it here. All right. And hey, we'll drink again sometime. As long as you're up for it, of course. There's nothing I'd love more. Well, see you. Mm, it's tough having to lead an entire organization. Daigo really had his work cut out for him. Sunhee. What happened with that small fire? The one where the Liu Mang set fire to Komijol turf. Oh, thanks for your concern, but I'd rather talk about literally anything else. There's some dissent within Ijincho, just something I have to deal with as a leader. Just nothing you should be worried about. No can do. You shouldn't have to shoulder that burden all by yourself. Why don't you lay it on me? You mentioned before there aren't many people who can drink with you as equals. I did say that, but... Ugh, screw it. There really is no winning with you. Honestly, I didn't want to air out our dirty laundry in front of you. Mm, so it was arson. But nobody saw who did it. Right. All we know right now is that the culprit was fully aware they were setting fire to Komi Jewel Turf. Don't you find that a little strange? Well, how so? If I remember correctly, your subordinate didn't hesitate to tell you that the Liu Mang was behind it. But how could they call them out without an eyewitness account? So you've noticed. 
Impressive. Ah, uh, long story short, the accusations against the Liumong are false. There's no evidence pointing to the perp, so it's all bullshit. But someone managed to escalate that BS to me without having to go through any filters. That's the real problem. What do you mean? I'm saying the lie originated within Komi Jewel, among the top brass at that. In other words, one of the Komi Jewel officers tried to deceive you with a false report. Precisely. He probably made his underlings start the fire, then spread the rumor that the Liumong was behind it. This act of betrayal only serves to escalate tension between Koma Jewel and the Liumong. I can't turn a blind eye to it. You're right. One wrong move and it'll lead to an all-out war between the two of them. Truth is, some people aren't too happy to see Komi Jewel and the Liumong getting along. By deepening the division and sowing discord, they'll be able to pin the blame on me for failing to take action. That's the traitor's end goal. He wants to chase me out and seize my throne to rule Komi Jewel himself. You managed to dig all that up? Then did you find out who the traitor is? I did, actually. He got sloppy when leaking the rumor. Turns out the traitor is the eldest of Komi Jewel's officers. His name is Han Chulsa. So, that's him there, huh? One of my great and wise uncles I've talked about before. Hm. At his age, he should be thinking about retirement. Guess he wanted to make a name for himself before going out. By betraying you, no less. If he's the oldest, then the two of you must go way back. I'm sorry to hear that. I understand why you didn't want to talk about it now. Yet I still opened up about everything from start to finish. <laughs> Just how do you do it, Kiryu-san? I only hope you feel a little better after talking about it. Ugh, this is such a mess. I really didn't want you to see me like this. I can't believe I just spilled everything to you. Was Han Chul Sa dissatisfied about something? I doubt he'd plan a coup for no reason. I can't think of anything. Except for the fact that I'm younger than him, and a woman. Considering he's a man who's faced countless adversities in battle, perhaps he doesn't want to end up under a leader like me. Most old men probably would think so. I've received the same report from different sources stating that Han Chul Sa is secretly rallying people to rebel. Saying crap like Sun He is capable for a woman, sure, but weak-willed, and other people are more suited to lead. So he's been working the rumor mill. I can find out anything and everything that happens in Ijincho. Han Chul Sa won't be able to keep up with the information warfare. But people look up to him as a legend of the past. My generation grew up listening to stories of his heroics. He once fought to the death with the Tojo clan back in its heyday. I never thought he would ever become my enemy. A man too full of pride as a man stuck in time, unable to move on. Nothing more than a relic of the past. Huh. Yeah, that old man's far too reckless for his own good. Oh, but he's older than you, Kiryu-san. Much older. You're not even in the same age group. You don't have to force yourself to say that. More importantly, what do you plan to do about him? As the head, it's up to you to decide how to deal with traitors. See, this is exactly why I didn't want to talk about this with you, Kiryu-san. Truth be told, I haven't made up my mind yet. Take your time to think it over. I'll think of something too. Look, I'd appreciate the help. If only we could have talked about something sexier instead. <laughs> True. Dealing with a traitor is not a very sexy topic. Thank you, Kiryu-san. Sharing your suspicions with someone else does help clear things up. 
Yeah, it certainly seems so. I'm sure you have other things to do, though. Your own problems are even more pressing than mine. I don't want to cause you any trouble, so... So? Can we just drink and talk about something stupid now? Sure. What better way is there to booze? <laughs> you really do get me. Always have. Hey, Namba. Mind if I join you? Huh. Be my guest. Nobody likes drinking alone. Oh, I think it's curious, son. Didn't we talk about this? I'm sorry you have to look after me. That's what it is. Once a nurse, you know. Besides, if it's any better, Ichiban made me promise to look after you, too. Understood. I can stay dry. Tonight, oolong tea only. <laughs> that sounds pretty good, actually. Bartender! So what was it I heard about you all losing your jobs? Oh, that's right, huh? Me, Ichiban, and Adachi-san, we all got the axe. Did you know I was homeless for a period of time? Once you hit a certain age, the job market dries up. Somehow I got this gig, even with my employment gap. And then, poof, it was gone. What kind of job was it? Quality inspector. A warehouse for medical equipment. Medicine drew you back in after all. <laughs> I don't know. Hard to consider that medicine. Uh, there were a couple of other stints, but it was all day labor or temp work. The inspection job came with a two-year contract. And my co-workers were decent folks. They actually treated me with a bit of respect for being an old guy. There's no need to put yourself down. Old or not, you've helped me plenty. I completely understand why they'd respect you. <laughs> Come on, you're gonna make me tear up. No need for that either. I'm just grateful, that's all. Oh, jeez, enough. I'm tapping out. We're too sober to be so heartfelt. Well, I can sympathize with how hard it is to find a job at our age. Losing it on top of everything else is a real shame. The thing is, if you don't mind me saying, it wasn't just the young guys. There was this girl there. Look at you. You're about to blush. <laughs> You can't blame a man for that, right? She was a little bit careless. She'd make tiny errors here and there. Whenever I'd catch one for her, she'd say, Namba-san, what would I do without you? <laughs> Must have been a pleasant working environment. Hey, I wasn't after anything, okay? I understand. You don't seem like that type. Sheesh. Listen to me, the point is, it might have been a simple job, but it was enough for me. I did good work, and I had good colleagues. That's all a guy really needs, isn't it? Especially a homeless guy. For a fresh start, he couldn't ask for better. And then, they just pulled me aside and said, my contract's up. Don't come back tomorrow. Do they give you a reason? Couldn't be asked to. If they don't extend your deal, that's the long and short of it. That's hardly fair. Yep. Yeah. So, I went back home. And Ichiban was suddenly all over the internet. Guess I'd made no secret of the fact that I was friends with the hero of Yokohama. Higher-ups must have thought, eh, gotta sweep me under the rug before this shitstorm hits. Kasuga got targeted and you took a stray one. Of course, I don't hold it against him or anything. Ichiban, Adachi-san, we were all set up. As far as I'm concerned, the three of us will always be in this together.
You're a remarkable fellow. Not everyone can be so forgiving. Kasuga chooses his friends well. Uh, all this talk should tell you I'm nothing special. Just an old fool. From one old fool to another, I think you're better than you realize. All this talk about you trying to get things back on track. I'm sorry you're saddled with me. Come on. You know it's not like that. Ichiban only asked me to see you home from Hawaii. It's my decision to stick around and have your back. So no more worrying that you're a burden. I'm the one who's embarrassed here. If you say so. I'm grateful. <laughs> so, how about we finish off with a toast? To knocking back tea! <laughs> I'll sip to that. Hey. Hi there, Kiryu-san. Mind a bit of company again? Happily, but, you know... No alcohol, right? Understood. Hmm. Oolong here isn't bad. You looked lost in thought a moment ago. Eh, uh, maybe. More crap with no easy fix. No simple answers? Well, I'm all ears. You sure? I mean, I don't want to weigh you down. Nonsense. We're friends. <laughs> Imagine that. Kazuma Kiryu himself is a friend of mine. Alright. Sorry in advance if I end up rambling. Out with it. What's eating you? I guess I was thinking... No. Remembering's more like it. My last job, my colleagues there had a send-off for me. Ah, that was that job inspecting medical equipment? Hey, you remembered. Yeah, that's the one. A whole bunch of them got together, but the mood was dead. Everyone was afraid they'd be next. <sighs> Times are tough out there. Yep. Oh, hey, uh, remember that girl I mentioned? A clumsy one? Of course. You seem to like talking about her. Ah, oh, jeez. I wanted to show you we took a picture together that day. There she is. That's her. Me, Abichan, making the peace sign. You know, she cried when I left. Sounds like a sweet girl. At which point, she wiped the tears away and made sure to tell me we were strictly just friends. Sweet, but not naive. She started out as a secretary. I swear, she could get any man she wanted. Must have been a good environment. Looks that way in the picture. Yeah. They all said they had no idea why the company was letting me go. They didn't know Ichiban's little PR emergency had anything to do with someone like me. So I kept my mouth shut and stayed quiet. It was sad, but at least they paid for my drinks. Okay, so why is it you're thinking back on that day now? Eh, uh, truth is, I should be out looking for a new job. I can't bring myself to, though. Ichiban and Adachi-san, meanwhile, have had to sacrifice way more than I have in all this. When they've got it worse, it's embarrassing to feel so disheartened. That makes sense? All right, let's just get hammered. Eventually, you'll have no problem opening up. You're not supposed to be drinking, damn it. You need to give your body a break right now. That's right, I forgot. <laughs> you forgot, huh? Thanks for the distraction. Anyway, uh, Ichiban and you have really earned my gratitude. Why do you say that? Well, I was unemployed, with no prospects out there. I think I finally realized that the world goes on just the same, with or without me. And then, when I needed it, 
Ichiban came calling to me for help. Not only that, I even got to lend my assistance to you, Kiryu-san. Being useful, to me, it feels like... salvation. I get it. In that case, I won't be shy if I ever need anything from here on. Good. I'm here for you. Guess I'm up. You better be into it. Sleep long as I can remember. I'm still snoozing away. Get up, get out, or get gone. Another day in a hell of your hey. own. Dun -dun. No chance to dream, gotta get it together. Hey, 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 hey. It's just another yes, sir, unless you scream out and say no. Just another yes, man. Block out all the noise and grow a spine. Hey, hey. This little box won't save my mind. Hey, hey. Watch me as I pry it open and wait. wait. Refreshed.